All right, welcome back to Agency Journey. This is Gray McKenzie from Zen Pilot. And this week, I have the privilege of bringing on my friend, Ann Shenton, who is the co-founder and CEO of Ascend Strategy and Design. They are a HubSpot Diamond and Advanced CMS Implementation Certified Solutions Partner. Uh, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Gray. It's a privilege to be here. I'm I'm super excited for this conversation. Um, I put out something on LinkedIn about wanting to talk to great agencies who've implemented EOS. I don't think when I put that out there that I even knew that you had implemented. Um, yeah. But that's part of the conversation that I want to have. So before we get to EOS, though, can you give us the profile of Ascend? And is it okay to call it Ascend, or do you call it Ascend Strategy and Design every time? <laughs> we absolutely do not call it Ascend Strategy and Design every time, um, you know. <laughs> that that would be a, a, a tough mouthful. pill to swallow for everybody, a mouthful. Yep. So Ascend is great. Um, quick profile. We are a HubSpot Diamond tiered partner. We've been around since October of 2015. So we just hit our seven year anniversary. Um, we specialize in HubSpot CMS builds and marketing hub implementations and retainers. So that's sort of our, our bread and butter right now. And you came from, you were at a marketing role in-house mm -hmm. before starting an agency, right? That's right. And there there actually is some overlap there. So uh, I started, um, you know, really my first real job out of, out of grad school was a marketing director role for a managed services provider, so an IT company. And uh, as, you know, time went on, um, I built out the website for this company. I started doing marketing for this company and uh, the leadership said, you know, this is working really well for us. Why don't we try to sell it to our clients? And so that's what ended up happening. So I started building websites um, and then later on that expanded into, you know, more of the uh, inbound offerings like social media marketing, email marketing and the like. And uh, eventually it got to the point where you know, I started to realize if we were going to be bringing on a higher caliber of client that we would need to brand ourselves separately from the IT side because, you know, if, if you're really looking for high quality marketing work, you're not going to go to an IT company, um, you know, and vice versa. Your your high quality IT needs are not going to be sent to your uh, agency because uh, right. that would be a disaster. So um, we started Ascend as a division of this company back in 2015. Um, there were, you know, some acquisitions, ownership changes that happened in 2020. And I'm really proud to say that uh, me and a couple of other of my colleagues were able to buy out the division and we own it outright now. So That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank was, you. This is kind of a strange question, but that's what I specialize in. So I'm going to ask it anyways. W were websites, were you excited to build websites? Is that what you wanted to do? Or was that just, hey, this is easy, an easier sell in the market? This is what the market is asking for right now? That's a really good question. Um, I Honestly, I, I would have to say it's the former. I really loved it. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I When when I was the one building the websites, they, they did not look great, but they performed very well. You know, I'm a marketer by background, so I know messaging. I know SEO. Um, I know, you know, the technical nuts and bolts of getting a website up and running. Uh, so even though they didn't necessarily look all that great, they performed well. And at the end of the day, that's what mattered most to the client, of course. Now, of course, you know, we're a much more sophisticated agency. We make really good looking websites uh, in addition to being high performing. So, you know, you don't have to sacrifice one for the other. Um, but absolutely, I love it. I still, you know, I, I'm trying to get to the point, um, as you advise, Gray, to sort of get out of the day-to-day, -day, but I still love to get in there and tinker around with the technical side of things. Yeah, well, that's uh, leading us into some of the um, EOS conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of where do you see, like, are you the visionary, the integrator? We can talk about that in a second. <laughs> the, yeah. the Ascend, Ascend website, though, is mm -hmm. beautiful. AscendInbound.com is the URL. Obviously, you've put a lot of work into it. But yeah. I don't even remember, I don't remember the first time that I saw your website, but I feel like it was probably 2017, 2018, like uh, uh -huh. four or five years ago. And it's always had 
strong design like it has always looked, yeah. the brain has looked really clean um from the outside that the is inside. a sorry, a sorry. testament you, you no no, no. okay that's a testament to our visionary um who is uh Stephen Carter he's the the other co-founder of Ascend and he has a really superior design acumen and uh definitely brings that side of the of the the table to light so yeah well, so that, that this is a transition I was going to make is clean mm-hmm. from the outside, like the inside. Let's talk about um, some of the some of the journey that you've been through. When yeah. did you find out about EOS, and then what was that? And hey, here's how we're and what's been what's been the approach to implementation? I guess is the the first question. Yeah, so I think that um, like a lot of things, you know, you, you start to hear about it in several different places, and and then you know over time it just it becomes this bug in your ear that you you think, gosh, I need to look into this more deeply. Um, so one of the places I saw it was the HubSpot Solutions Partner Facebook group. There are a lot of folks talking about EOS, um, even having it on their website, you know, things like that. And then I read a book. Um, by Clota Higgins. It's like a happy and healthy digital agency, I think was the name of the book. It's a really quick read, good read. And it um, it talked about, you know, how great EOS was. And so between some of those different rumblings, um, you know, I picked up traction. This was close to the time that we were looking at, you know, transitioning over to ownership. And so um, I knew that if we were going to be taking this on, that we needed to build it the right way. And it was transformational. I mean, it, it really uh, simplified a lot of things for us, um, helped us prioritize, you know, um, set a clear vision. Um, just all all sorts of really wonderful things have come about as a result of implementing EOS. Have you self-implemented it or did you work with an implementer? <laughs> we have self-implemented. Um, I think I saw that you, Gray, have started working with an implementer recently. Right. Um, I think that's probably something we will do at some point. But so far, it's it's worked out well to self-implement. We use a software called 90.io uh, to help us sort of manage all of the efforts um, in EOS. And that's been really helpful to just help us keep tabs on everything. Um, of course, we're uh, Zenpilot fans and ClickUp fans. So we also manage a lot of our day-to-day, you know, rocks, um, issues and things like that and click up as well yeah that that might actually be one thing that's helpful for folks to go into the mm-hmm. 90 you know we often hear this tension of like um any of the pm tools don't have all the eos specific tools that mm-hmm. a 90 or eos one or you know, one of the other platforms yeah. has but then if we put everything inside those tools then how do we have our tasks and you know of the to-dos that come out of meetings how mm-hmm. do those wind up back in our project manager tool. How do you handle that? I, I'm glad you asked. So we actually struggled with that a bit as well. Um, so essentially what we do is it's a bit of a hybrid approach. Uh, we we track our issues and um, meetings and, and notes and things like that in 90. We track our, um, you know, overall revenue goals and metrics and all of that in 90. Um but anything that is an action item goes in ClickUp. So if there's something that we need to do, we put it in ClickUp so that, you know, we make sure that, that it gets it gets You're done. Following the yep. rules. <laughs> That's right. ClickUp that doesn't exist. That's great. <laughs> um, what? So the self-implementation, uh-huh. often you'll find folks are also deviating from some pieces. They'll say, hey, this piece, this didn't really feel like it worked for us. Uh-huh. Is there, and you're, you're laughing already. Is there is there anything that you feel like, hey, we've put our own spin on this from EOS, either uh, to your benefit or to your detriment? That is a really good question. Um, I think it's more not necessarily that we are not uh, or that we have deviated, more so that we are not leveraging the full EOS toolbox. There's there's more that we need to do, you know. I think we're answering the the eight questions. You know, we have our values, we have our um, issues list, we we have our KPIs, all of that. But there are uh, you know questions of a process and measurement and and other things like that that we still 
have a ways to go to get get a better handle on. So. Sure, that makes sense. What you mentioned culture there? Okay. How has that evolved? And like, what's uh-huh. the relationship between that culture evolution or development and the EOS implementation at the same time? Yeah, that. Um, so that's one of the things that I think really spoke to me when I read Traction was that there was such a focus on clearly defining your purpose statement, clearly defining your core values, and then, you know, building your team based off of a fit between your core values and and basically their capacity to do the job, you know, the right people, right seats mentality. Um, and because of that, you know, we, we it gives you a scorecard, right, or, or a checklist, I, I, I should say, um, where that when you are evaluating a candidate, you basically go down the list of your values and say, okay, they, they meet all of these and they get it, they want it, and they have the capacity to do the job. And just sort of streamlining and simplifying that has made hiring decisions much more clear. Um, so on that side, you know, we're, we're hiring the right people for the right seats. That's, of course, a big part of building a, a good culture is just having the right people in place. And then the other aspect of that, of course, is the working environment, um, li- making sure that we live these values every day, um, and then making sure that we're all aligned and believe in the vision. And so, again, that's another aspect of EOS is like it forces you to set a clear vision, define the path to get there, and get the team members on the same page. So, you know, we get the team together every quarter and we go through our, you know, quarterly performance. We go through, okay, how are we measuring up to our annual goals? Are we on track to hit annual revenues? Are we on track to hit, you know, our monthly recurring revenue goals, our project revenue goals, all of that? And we're really transparent about all of that because, you know, we want buy-in from the team. We want them to understand where we're trying to go and how we're going to get there. Um, and then, you know, more of the long-term piece is looking at, okay, well, where are we going to be in 10 years? Or, you know, I, I love the three-year picture too, because it's sort of, you can see it, you, you can really see it happening, but it's far enough away that it, it still seems exciting. And, um, I, you know, just really being able to see like what, what this is going to look like in, in a short amount of time, how, how much larger we're going to be, you know, how, what better opportunities we're going to have how much more valuable we're going to be to our clients, you know, in the marketplace um, really helps our, our team get excited. So, yeah. So your core values, I'm on uh, uh, about page right now. You can stay humble, yeah. work hard, play hard, people over profit, quality over quantity. Uh-huh. As a total aside, by the way, I often find that when you ask people what question, like um, how are you screening people out? And I'm going to lead into that question for you. Screening people in, screening uh-huh. people out in the recruiting process. I find often the um, the specific values that they reference wind up showing later in their order. So hey. like quality over quantity is your fifth one. I don't know why that is. I think maybe sometimes we, we pick some easy ones early on and then you get a little bit yeah. farther down. It's like, oh, well, what's our, what's our fourth one? What's our fifth one? What's our third? Whatever. Yeah. And maybe, maybe there are ones where, hey, not every, there's a lot more people who wouldn't fit this. So quality or quantity, <laughs> um, you know, maybe there's a, there's a way to, um, there's certainly ways to screen people yeah. out. Okay. But how do uh-huh. you screen for that in the recruiting process? And then is there one or two of those values I did. where you eliminate more people than other ones? Or is that not the case? And it's, you know, there's an even distribution over those five. Sure. So just to clarify, Gray, are you asking how we screen out? For all values, or just that specific okay. value of quality? Yeah, yeah for, for all values, right? Okay. So, what is, I'm I'm interviewing for a job at Ascend. What are you mm-hmm. asking me, or what are you looking for that says, "Oh, Grace, definitely not a fit to be here"? Or yeah, I, we... I would have to say the really the number one is our number one value, which is stay humble. Um, and of course, we evaluate across all of the values. You know, we we look for work ethic. Uh, we look for people that have interests outside of work because we're going to have to spend all this time with them. Like we want to hang out with people that are kind of fun, you know, um, people over profit, just not in it for the paycheck. Basically we compensate well, but that's we're we're here for a bigger purpose and quality over quantity, you know, just 
looking at the work that they've done and you know making sure that it's it's up to snuff it's it's top notch whether that's writing samples code um you know references things like that uh but I'll, just to go back to stay humble you know that's that's probably the biggest one that we screen on and uh, red flags like as as far as like sort of weeding people out um hints of blame like well i can't do my job because of x y and z these people are in my way like things like that um a lot of self-talk i'm so great because of xyz and I, and i understand that you need to do that to a certain extent in a job interview but i found that there you know there's a way to present that in such a way where you know you can demonstrate your um your capabilities without bragging and and there's there's a line there and you know if if that line is crossed then they're probably not going to be a good fit for us and um we're very much a collaborative environment we we're the kind of place where you know we have each other's back um there's not a lot of shifting blame uh there's really no shifting blame among the team or to our clients so we just want to make sure that we keep that intact in the long haul yeah how do you how do those how do these values play out in the day-to-day not necessarily like so you've mm-hmm. got a team of people who exemplify this is how mm-hmm. do you keep promoting those values to build the culture that you're trying to build is that you know, a monthly all hands that we have, or, mm-hmm. or are we tagging people and celebrating that on a weekly basis? What are, um, what are you doing that promote those values with the current team? Yeah. Um, so a few different things that we do. We have, um, we have a weekly stand up, a uh, very short meeting, just celebrating wins, you know, housekeeping items, um, and just a chance for us to all get together on one Zoom and and look each other in the eye for a little bit every week. Uh, we use Slack, and so we have um, we use the the Hey Taco reward system in Slack, where you give each other little taco emojis, and uh, those can actually be redeemed for real rewards, like a day off or Amazon gift card or lunch, etc. And so we really um, make use of that to to give people recognition for their hard work. Um, we're very intentional about our get-togethers, whether those are virtual or um, in person, we have two in-person get-togethers a year. We have one uh, that's here um, in our office, our physical office, uh, which only a couple of us actually work in here in South Georgia. Um, but we bring the team down and uh, you know have sort of a, a working week here. But we're all in the same place together, mixed in with a few fun activities and dinners and things like that. And then we also have an annual retreat. We call it the Hangout. We actually just got back from that last week. We went down to Orlando. We went to Epcot for a day. We um, you know, hung out by the pool. We went to Top Golf. It was honestly the time of my life. <laughs> it, was, it was a really good time. And uh, I think it's a benefit of having you know, not uh, heavy overhead costs with having a physical facility is that you're able to take some of that um, money and, and put it towards a really cool experience like that 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 is awesome um, i think <laughs> um hey taco also as a like as a slack mm-hmm. tool it's funny how some of those simple th- like i think having a mix of both having a really impactful on-site and a high emotional mm-hmm. intensity um get-togethers are really important and i also think having the simple block and tag and hey, we got a weekly stand up and we do this weird thing uh-huh. in Slack that looks really strange from the outside, but on the inside, it's super fun. It's part of um, part of building culture. That's awesome. Absolutely. Thanks. How do you, as you think about the impact of implementing EOS and you're on your journey um, uh-huh. there, how do you quantify that? Or if you, you know, you're telling somebody at a at inbound next year, hey, here's here's why uh-huh. this is a great decision. Is it, hey, we started measuring numbers with these consistent scorecards in a way we hadn't done before and we started all of a sudden hitting it, you know, revenue goals, profit goals, whatever that is. <laughs> or is it um, more on the culture front? Like, what are the ways that you quantify the impact of EOS? I think they go hand in hand, Gray. Um, I think, you know, again, if you have the right people, the right culture in place, folks will do good work. And as a result, you'll hit your numbers. Um, but the scorecard has to be there I, I mean you know I think 
I, I think back to the time before we implemented EOS, and we had an annual revenue goal every year, but there was no backing that out. You know, it was just like, well, we, we think we can hit this. And what EOS really brings into play is, you know, the the quarterly structure, the, the rock structure, and then just breaking each of these pieces down. It, you know, it's like that analogy with the jar that you, you know, fill it up with rocks and then sand and um, it, it's that kind of thing is just breaking it down into digestible chunks so that we know, okay, if this is our annual revenue goal, this is where we have to get this quarter. If we have to get here this quarter, this is how many clients we need to bring on. If we need to bring on this many clients, then we need to have this many sales meetings a week, you know, or this many proposals are out the door. So it really helped you know, distill that down into manageable chunks that give you really a playbook to get there. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, I got three questions for you as we wrap up. Okay. Two of them are short and silly. Third one might require Love a little it. more thought. Um, what's the weirdest number on your scorecard? Is there anything that would surprise us? Weirdest number not, on not the number, score? Metric. Measurable, right. I guess I should say, right? Love. I don't know if it's a weird one, but maybe unusual. We have an employee NPS score. Yeah. So, you know, typically NPS is for client facing stuff. Um, but we, we do a biannual <clears throat> and we'll probably eventually move into a quarterly employee NPS. And that's been really helpful to get a gauge on, you know, where we can do better as leaders, how we can improve our work environment for our employees. That's a great one. You've already given us some tool recommendations. You mentioned mm -hmm. um, 90, ClickUp, Slack, Hey Taco. Uh -huh. um, are there any other lesser known tools that are like, oh, these are the Ansent, Shenton, or the Ascend secret secret tools mm. that uh, that you're loving right now? Yeah, this one is really simple, but I love it. It's called Slick Plan. And I use it to build out uh, flowcharts and sites architecture diagrams i found that a lot of these tools are just like way more complicated than what i need and this one's really simple straightforward you just plug it in and you're good to go i really like that tool that's awesome mm -hmm. third one is looking forward we're wrapping up you know here in q4 of 22 mm -hmm. as we're recording this um what's the big you know you had this three originally you're running towards but what are the priorities mm -hmm in the next six, 12 months that, that you're running for, for Ascend? Yeah. Um, you know, one is just maintaining our, our diamond tier status in HubSpot, making sure that we escalate forward into elite at some point over the next couple of years. Um, so that's, that's been a big push for us. Um, another big push is, uh, you know, we have a formalized employee onboarding plan but we want to build that out into more of a full-fledged development plan or, you know, offering for our employees so that they're always improving and learning and, and sort of have a, a place to go for that. And then um, I think a lot of agencies are, are going through this right now too, but, um, or maybe it's just at the point where we are in our, our maturation, um, but looking to standardize our offerings and, and, make those, you know, more packaged up and easier for prospects and clients to understand. Yeah, that's awesome. All three of those make a lot of sense. Well, this has been super fun. I mentioned the Agreed. website before. Is there anywhere else that we should point people in to follow you? Um, I love LinkedIn. I, I post, you know, a few times a week. So, uh, yeah, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I always love to connect with other agency owners and employees. So, Awesome. We'll make sure that yep. is in the show notes here. Thanks so much for joining us on the agency journey. Yeah. Thank you, Gray. It was a pleasure.